Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another night of Name That Tune. No, just kidding. We're going to get ready to worship. Pastor Joe is out this evening helping Jackie with her mom. So you guys are in for a treat. This man standing in the shirt you can barely see is going to be speaking tonight. Did you bring your Eclipse sunglasses? <laughs> So anyway, let's just stand and we get ready here to worship. Father God, we just thank you for tonight. We ask that you would have your way in us. Lord, despite the melody, despite the lyrics, Lord, most importantly, let it be a song of worship from our heart to you as we lift your name and exalt you in this place. Not our will, but your will be done, Father. Just come, Holy Spirit.
forget that this Friday night is our gospel singing night. It starts at 7 o'clock. If you want to sing something, just tell Paul when you come in the door that you want to sing. And you can sing whatever your hearts desire. I was told tonight that you don't have to sing Southern Gospel or even an old hymn. You can just sing whatever you want. So I'll take that one to the bank. I'm just about out of Southern Gospel songs. <laughs> just no disco. No, no disco. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> no, but also, don't forget that this Sunday we're going to have uh, Carrie Kirkwood from Tyler, Pastor Joe's brother. And uh, that's always a great, huge treat to have him. He's very prophetic. He has a ministry to other pastors all over the world. He's written numerous books. How many books has he written, Fauna? Six. Uh, one of us is called uh, something about the blessing, the power of blessing. Yeah, and uh, that one I've read that one, and uh, so. But anyway, you don't want to miss Sunday with Carrie Kirkwood. So anyway, I think that's about it. We're gonna do our offering. Square in the back. Yeah. And text to give should be on the screen. Check, check. If you're not awake, you will be here shortly. Amen. Wow. Well, Pastor Joe, as you all know, has is uh, taking care of his uh, mother-in-law and Jackie. And the family is, uh, this is a very trying time for them. And so uh, we need to keep them lifted up in prayer. Uh, it's a, like I say, it's just a very trying time, uh, and uh, we're just praying that uh, for peace and comfort, and that uh, as uh, Jackie's mom goes home, I think she's 94 years old, that this will be a uh, smooth passing, and uh, that uh, it will be a celebration. So, with that being said, uh, Pastor Joe uh, texted me last night. He asked if I would uh, fill in for him tonight, so I'm not. I'm trying to fill some big shoes. Uh, I've been uh, blessed to uh, go with him all over the world, basically, and uh, minister in, in, in different countries and watch what uh, God does and what uh, He continues to do. This church, um, we are. For the size of church that we're that we are, it's amazing to me how big that we punch, if you will, in the in the demonic realm, and how that we have spread the good news to so many countries, and to watch those countries continue to 
not only build, but come on board with us, come under our covering, and build churches. Uh, just to mention a few, Nepal has exploded, and, uh, uh, and Pakistan, another one that has exploded. Um, we've got the country of Kenya that uh, has several churches now under our, our uh, covering, and so we're, we're really part of a, a big move here. And you know what that reminds me of? What's that? There you go. Hallelujah. The book of Acts. There you go. We are the New Testament church. We are the New Testament church, and we are growing. And so uh, it's, it's exciting to be a part of a church that does that. Those of you that have not had the opportunity or the privilege to maybe make it to the mission field, everything that you do at this church is in support of. So uh, just know that when, you're, when we're out there, and uh, Emily's been there, uh, Jeanette's been there, Pastor Emily's been there, Jeanette's been there, uh, I've been there, uh, there's been several, and there's other people from other churches, Joan Hunter Ministries, Vonna's been there, um, I think uh, you've been to the Philippines, right? Right. So anyhow, that being said, we are a New Testament church, and we do, yeah, wife's been once. And so she, she, she has the uh, privilege of holding the fort down while uh, I go out and help spread the good news. We are scheduled for uh, another trip at the end of May, May 20th through June 6th. We're going to be going to Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, I think that there's going to be a conference there of over a thousand pastors. I think Joan Hunter Ministries is joining us there. Uh, and that will be uh, an exciting time. It will be a time that uh, they are, that the ministers are coming to be ministered to. And uh, it will be a powerful time in the Lord. So uh, the signs, wonder, miracles happen just as much at those ministers' conferences as they do at the big crusades. And so those of us, those are the people that are going to, those people that are going to join us, uh, it will be a powerful time. Uh, we go from there, we go to Uganda, and we will be doing a crusade with Pastor Irene Manji. Um, she'll be setting up a crusade. Uh, and then we'll probably, uh, well, we'll see what happens with the ministry and the orphanage that, uh, that this church has built basically uh, this past year. Uh, we built a special needs orphanage for, for children, and so uh, we're going to go and do a medical outreach there. So uh, pray about supporting that stuff. Those of you online, I know that people here at the church already do that, but uh, those of you that are watching, pray about supporting that because uh, it's something that uh, we definitely need and can use. Um, that being said, what the Lord has been... Uh, laying on my heart here for quite some time now has been on the uh, subject of love. And, uh, you know, when we talk about love, I really don't think that the majority of the church, I'm not just talking about this church, but I'm talking about the church in general, has a, a real deep concept of how much God really loves us. I mean, the, 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 for Jesus to come and do what he did, we just celebrated Easter, Resurrection Sunday, and for him to willingly lay down his life and go through what he went through to give us the opportunity to spend eternity with him, uh, it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, the movie, I, I talk about the movie, The Passion of the Christ. I showed that on a Friday here several years ago when I ministered to the Friday uh, crowd. And uh, to watch what Jesus endured willingly, walked out his walk of obedience, if you will, to de unto death was, was quite a feat. And so he showed us how much he really loved us. And uh, it continues to show us, not only with what we walk through on a daily basis, but 
growth, signs, wonders, and miracles. It, it, it's amazing how much God and Jesus, the, the Trinity, if you will, truly love us. And, you know, if I was to ask everybody in here to, if you love Jesus to raise your hand, I think everybody's hand in the room would go up. I think those watching, if you've got a relationship with Jesus, that your hands would go up. So now that I see all these imaginary hands up, we're going we're, we're gonna to unpack that a little bit. What does that really mean? Okay? Because we, we know about what Jesus has done and how much he loves us. We say that we love him. Okay? But what does that look like? Let's unpack that a little bit. And uh, there's a scripture that... that uh, comes to mind, and it's in John, uh, the book of John, and it's John 14, 15. And it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay, so where does that stop? Does it stop? But you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know about, does it stop? The answer is no, it doesn't. We know that. But how many of us are really cognizant of that throughout everything that we go through in life? How many times does me, my, and I come up? I deserve, I want, I need. How does that come up? And if you look at the actions, not just in the church, but your place of work, uh, your friends, your family, okay, does the love of Jesus, well, us showing him how much we love him, come out in our daily lives when things don't go our way? Not as planned, when it just doesn't happen, when you do things that you totally don't want to do. How many of us in here do things that we don't want to do? Okay. All right, now do we do that all the time or just when we feel like it? Does, uh, I don't feel like that today. Or somebody cut me off on the highway or uh, the boss gave me the, the, the garbage detail. Uh, somebody at church didn't consider your feelings. Okay, does, uh, where does the love of Jesus fit in and all that? Because we basically have two commandments now. Well, we have more than that. But the two commandments is, is love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. And when you really want to break that down, that's really, it, it, there's a message in, that, in those three things all by itself. But it, the next one is what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, what is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Who is your family member? Who is your work associate? And are we really showing the love of Jesus in all that? You know, I came across um, a, a short passage here, and I'm just going to read it. And it says, it's important to make a distinction between loving yourself and being selfish. We do need to love ourselves. Love your neighbor. That, that was just the, the scripture I just quoted, right? But it says it's important to make a distinction between loving yourself and being selfish. When you love yourself, you're accepting God's love and letting his love through, flow through your life into others' lives. Selfishness is different. That's what we need to look at a little bit. And I'm not pointing any fingers because when I go like this, I've got three of them pointing back at me. But it says selfishness is different in that it directs your attention only to yourself rather than to God and his call to love. Hmm. Loving yourself empowers you to serve others while being selfish makes it difficult to do so. Think about that. Loving yourself empowers you to serve others while being selfish makes it difficult to do so. That's a pretty powerful statement right there. 
Because I can love myself. But do I love myself to lay down my wants, my concerns, my money, okay, my time to help others? Because it's real convenient, isn't it, Pastor Emily, to help others when in need? Right? You don't know anything about that, right? Would you like to? <laughs> I, 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 I'll be more than happy to share it, but you're going to have to share it with a whole bunch of us. Okay? But helping other people, okay, is what we're called to do. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your walk. And it doesn't matter who it is. It really doesn't matter. Are we showing, how, how is it worded up here? Um, when you love uh, yourself, you're accepting God's love and letting his love, through your, letting his love flow through your life into others' lives. The love of Christ and what he did for us, is that, I mean, is that evident in my life? Can other people see that in my life? Not let me tell you about what I did. You know, I went out of my way and I did this and I did that and I gave this and I gave that. and No. When, when you don't say a word and other people talk about you, not necessarily the people that you helped, but other people see what you do and, and, and have done and bring that up. You know, I watch so-and-so do this, that, and the other. You know, uh, I'll give an example of a really neat thing that happened. Um, there was a lady here in the church, and she needed some help, and I went with Pastor Joe to help bring her vehicle back to town. It had some mechanical issues. We, we got it to a mechanic shop, and Pastor Joe was filling the people in about how she needed her vehicle, and she was going to have to rent a vehicle, and things of this nature. We were there, and a man that was in the transmission shop, okay, just paid $1,900 out of his own pocket for parts for a vehicle that he was having worked on, pulls out $400 cash and said, apply it to this lady's bill. Okay? That, that's exactly, but that guy right there was showing the love of Christ. The Holy Spirit laid it on his heart to help somebody who didn't have a clue who this lady was, but showed the love of Christ. Wasn't asked, I, I mean, I couldn't, I, you know, there's this, I couldn't pick him out of a room full of Japs. That's not a racist statement. I'm just saying I, I couldn't tell you who that man was if my life depended. But I know what happened. Those are the kind of things that we're all called to do. And it doesn't matter where you're at financially. It really doesn't matter. It, it matters none. You know, uh, Victor said it the other night, a week, a week ago. People don't know how much you care until... The, people don't know... I, I, and I still mess the way he said, said it. But basically, they don't care until they know how much you care. And how do you show people that you care? You don't tell them about it. Love, regardless of what the dictionary says, what they, I mean, and there's several different types of love in the Bible, agape love, what, but it's an action word. It's an action word. It requires action to show love. And it's typically not a convenient thing. You know, Daryl and I were visiting here, I guess it was on a Sunday. It was Easter Sunday, I think. And we were talking about the altar call. And uh, I, uh, I've been, Holy Spirit's really been dealing with me on the end times and making a public statement for Jesus. And for quite a while now, on, on Fridays, whenever a, a, an altar call is presented or I'm called to give an altar call, personally, I don't want your head bowed. I, I, and I, it's not about me. 
okay, it's, it has nothing to do with me. The reason I don't, and that was an old thing. How many, I mean, all of us in here have been to churches say, oh, everybody close your eyes, bow your heads. This is a real personal thing between you and God. It's now a public thing. And if you're not ready to make it a public thing, you need to. Amen? But, but you need because it's about love. See, everything about an altar call when I was growing up, and many of you here were exposed to, was all about fear. That's exactly what Daryl and I discussed. It's, it was all about fear. If you died tonight, where are you going? Okay? Well, thank God that there that, that was a tool then. Okay? I'm glad that was a launching place. But now it's about love. Okay? I didn't know about the love of Jesus until, I, I mean, I grew up in church. My grandfather was a pastor. My great-grandfather was a pastor. Okay? I grew up in church. I, I ran away from it when I hit about 13 years old. Found out there was girls out there and other things. But love is why Jesus laid his life down. And love, the scripture said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Okay? So, loving Jesus is shown by what we do out here. Okay? It, it, it absolutely, and it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. I don't have to speak about it. You don't. Vonna here works in the office and has helped people for as long, and you used to volunteer. You still do. There's several, there's several people here that help other people all the time. That's showing the love of Jesus. But getting back to the public display, okay, when an altar call is given, do you love Jesus enough to stick your hand up? And it used to be everybody's eyes are closed and everybody's head's bowed. But it can't be that way anymore. It cannot be that way anymore, church. And those of you watching, I'm saying that to you as well. It can't be that way anymore. Are you man or woman enough to make a stand for Jesus? And if you can't do it in a protected sanctuary, how are you ever going to do it out in the world? How are you ever going to do it? You have to be able to make a, a confession and, and, and a commitment. All right? Pride. Daryl and I talked about the pride thing. Pride. Oh. Well, I don't want nobody to know about that. that me, me and Jesus, you know, we got that covered. Okay. Where does accountability f fall into that? How many times have you known people or you yourself have maybe struggled with something? Okay. Oh, me, uh, and too prideful to talk to another member in the church and I'm not talking about somebody that's on the same level as you or uh, Christianity-wise, okay, or their walk-wise, but or somebody lower than you, but somebody that you would look up to as a pastor, an elder, or someone, okay? Somebody that's been doing this a long time. When there's accountability in something, when you take whatever it is you may be struggling with and expose it to the light... When you expose it to the light, not only have you died to self, but you've taken away the biggest weapon the enemy has against you. The biggest one. Okay, and it doesn't matter what it is, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff that are probably, I mean, we, you know, we think of what we would call the big ones. We talk about adultery and pornography and drugs and alcohol and, and lying. How about gossip? How about anger? How about whatever? You pick it. Pick it, okay? And going back to the scripture, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But how often do, do we let our feelings, our emotions, 
control the outcome of those? How often? And you don't have to answer me. I'm just asking a question. Answer yourself. You know, you get honest with you. Jesus will get honest with you too. Because it says in the word, if you draw closer to me, I'll draw closer to you. How, close do you. how much Jesus do you want? How much Holy Spirit do you want? There's no limit. There is no limit on how much he will give you. How hungry are you? Do you participate in everything that comes down the pike? Okay? Are you a part of everything that, you know, this and that? It could be there's Bible studies here. There's women's Bible studies. There is Sunday school. Okay? There are several things that are available here. I don't understand why they're not full every, every week. I'm just saying. I don't feel like it. I don't want to go. Well, why not? How hungry are you? Well, how hungry are you? There you go. And you're here. Okay? So, the love of Jesus, okay, we, is evident. And we all say we love Jesus. But if we were really to get honest with ourselves, where do we, where do we draw the line? I'm just here to tell you that I think that everybody has a line. You catch me on a day that I haven't had a lot of sleep. Let my wife chew on me a little bit. And then cut me off on the highway. <laughs> I end up having to repent. Now, 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 let me carry the flag for all y'all. Okay? I'm the only one. So now that I'm the only one for that, let's go digging in somebody else's backyard. See, because this is the thing. I take my stuff away because I throw it out there. And yeah, sometimes it's funny, but it's, it's not okay. You know, when, when, when those things happen, do you think Jesus just turns a blind eye? He doesn't. And thank God, there's, thank God for grace. But I'm not counting on that for, oh, I'm going to do this anyway. The love that we show each other, the love and respect that we show the church, we have as many problems in the church, and I'm not necessarily talking about this church, but I'm you look at churches, and how many times have people, I've, I've been coming here 13, 14 years now, and I've seen a bunch of people come and go. And why did they come and go? Because they got offended. Excuse me, I need to grab a Kleenex here. They got offended. Excuse me. So, if, why are they getting offended? Don't know. Okay. And how about the people that are offending them? Okay. Do you know that if you're the offender or the offendee, that you're suffering from the same thing? You are. You know what it is? What's the root of it? It's pride. Either you didn't think or you did, they'll get over it. I'm in charge. This is mine or whatever. Okay? Who's it about? Who is it about? And on the flip side of it, as far as the person that's offended, are you wearing your, your heart on your sleeve? Are you complaining about everything that comes, everything that somebody says or does? I have some stories. I have some testimonies about going to church here. I've lived through, through some things here. There isn't a perfect church. There isn't a perfect pastor. And there isn't a perfect whatever. 
We all are a work in progress. But that doesn't give us an excuse to not keep his commandments. To love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what we're talking about here more than anything today. Is love thy neighbor as thyself. Do I love my neighbors myself? You know, I, ha I have a neighbor right behind my house. And I was going to have, uh, I, I guess we were getting rid of some furniture that we didn't want, but it wasn't ready for the junkyard. So I took it out of the house, and I took it in the alley, like everybody else. And I set this dresser and some things down kind of near the, the, uh, dumpster. the dumpster thing. That, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, she, my wife remembers. <laughs> and the next day, oh, it was the same night? Okay, I thought it was the next day. I got a visit from the police department. Yeah. My neighbor had a camera that shone at the dumpster and called the law on me for littering. And believe it or not, it's against the law to leave your stuff out like that, even though people drive up and down those alleys and pick that stuff up. It's against the law. Well, what Roland just said, you thought that's where you put it, where other people could get it. That's exactly what I was living. That's exactly what I did. And I had no inkling, not, not a clue, that it was making this guy mad. Regardless of what he had in his driveway and everything else. Okay? But I, literally, I got a, a visit from, from the police. And, and I said, wow, I had no idea. And she said, yes, it's wrong. And we could write you a ticket. And you could this and that. And I'm going, are you, are you serious? She said, yes, I am. So obviously, my neighbor complained pretty hard. He was, he was upset that I set stuff out in the alley for other people to get. Now, I didn't say that he didn't save me a trip to the dump. But I really didn't think that it was something that needed to go to the dump. I thought somebody could use it. It didn't matter. It was still wrong. And it offended my neighbor. Then I got offended. No, I wanted to introduce him to Roy D. Mercer, I'll be honest. Those of you from Texas or Oklahoma know who that is. But my point is this. Okay, I wasn't happy because he called the law on me. Had me on film, and the funny thing is, is that the officer would, it, actually it wasn't an officer, it was a detective. It was a detective. Uh, wouldn't tell me exactly what's going on. Well, it, it didn't take me long to figure it out. Well, there's a camera right there, so pointing right at the dumpster, so I kind of figured it out. But So getting back to loving my neighbor, how do I love this guy that tried to get me in trouble for me trying to do a good deed for other people? That's, that was my take on it. I was wrong. Do you know what the Holy Spirit had me do? Write him a note. Said, I'm so sorry I offended you. And I showed it to his little camera and I went and put it on his door, uh, his garage door. Okay. How's humble pie taste? It's what I was eating. Did I want to do that? No. I bet he was shocked. You know what happened? A month or two later, a little while later, he knocks on my door. He says, hey, he says, do you have a shotgun? I said, yeah. Two or three, four, a few. He says, man, I got some shotgun shells. You want them? I said, yeah. He gave me a box wow. this tall, this, this long, and this wide 
with full boxes and loose shotgun shells in it. Wow. Money. You remember it. So they went to your house. A bunch of them. My point is, is I didn't want to apologize. I didn't think I was doing wrong. And, and, and this is in no way to point, to, to tell you how good I am. or That's not the point. The point is, Holy Spirit told me to do something. And I, and I did apologize. I mean, I literally wrote it on my business card so he'd know who my name was. Because I don't think we knew each other's names. I showed the note to the camera and I went and put it on his garage door and he literally gave me a box and there probably was $300-$400 worth of shotgun shells in there here you go you know there's story after story after story of doing the right thing okay when I was wronged now, I, I, I'll carry the flag, too. I'm the only one that's ever done wrong, been wronged, right? Nobody's ever done anything bad to you, right, Vonna? How about you, Emily? Yeah. yeah. Jeanette? <laughs> Don? <laughs> You're not exempt. Susan? Bo? <laughs> we just go down the line. Everyone here. Terry, Terry. All of us, okay, have had to endure the wrong. And did I show the love of Christ when it happened? Did I? Now, I wasn't going to say this one, but the Holy Spirit's telling me to do it, so I guess I will. Did I show the love of Christ? Did I walk in obedience and show the love of Christ? even when I didn't want to, okay? There was a, a situation here, here at the church years ago. Well, I'll just, might as well tell the whole story. Some of you know it, some of you don't. But when I, uh, when I first came to this church 13 years ago, 14 years, 13, 14 years ago, um, Pastor Joe asked me to do the, the Sunday school class or, pr or pray about it be the backup Sunday school teacher. And uh, he said, I want you to pray about it, and then we'll talk here in a week or so. And so I prayed about it, and the Lord said, okay, you, you need to be the backup Sunday school teacher. And so he met me in the hall one Sunday morning, like a week later, and said, well, did you pray about it? And I said, yeah, I, I guess I'll do it. And he said, well, are you ready? She's not here today. I went, uh, uh, no. He said, the Bible says to be instant in and out of season, to be ready. Here's your first lesson. All righty then. Well, okay. Fair enough. He says, but let's go to lunch. He said, I, I want to talk about this a little bit more with you. So I went to lunch with Pastor Joe a week later and we sat down, and it was someplace, at Orange Julius or something. Anyhow, he was very somber and very to the point. He said, I'm glad you prayed about this. He says, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to get offended at me. And I looked at him like he'd lost his mind. I'm serious. I could not believe that he asked me to do something and then tells me right to my face, I'm going to give you the opportunity to get offended at me. Those of you listening online, take heed. It's going to happen. I said, okay, I guess. I can't imagine how two people going to the same church, serving God, will end up getting offended at each other. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't see that. Silly me. So, took him nine years, but he got the job done. He got the job done once. Make a long story short, I got offended, got mad. 
decided I wasn't going to go to church on a Sunday, didn't show up to church. Never said anything to Pastor Joe. The whole time I'm gone, I missed about a week. Went out of town or something. Holy Spirit starts working on me. What are you upset about? Well, I didn't do anything wrong. He did. Okay. So what? He said, I want you to go buy him a gift and apologize to him for you, him doing you wrong. What? True story. What? And not just a, a little gift, but something nice. Something he'd want. I don't don't want to do that. Charlie, are you going to walk in obedience or not? Are you going to do what I'm telling you to do or not? So I did. Took him out and gave him the tool set. Here, this is good. I said, man, I'm sorry I got mad at you. There was no, you had it coming. You did me wrong. Poor, poor pitiful me. I'm sorry I got mad at you. That was hard to do. Really hard to do. Pastor Joe didn't even have a clue how mad I really was. I was fired up. Okay? And in the world's eyes, maybe, maybe even had a good reason to. But it was part of a growth process. Did I love the Lord enough to do what he asked me to do and show the love of Christ when in my eyes it wasn't warranted? That's just a couple little stories. All of you have stories that where you've been wrong somewhere. Showing the love of Jesus is what this is all about. That's, that's what it's about. You know, I'll change gears and go back to how much Jesus loves us. When I was a, I, I, I'll tell you when I really got that. When I was a young teenager, I never got in trouble. I was a saint. How many of y'all believe that? I wasn't. When I was in high school, um, I, uh, I decided that I didn't want to be in class. I thought I liked hanging out at the pool hall a little bit better than I did class. And uh, that eventually warranted a phone call to my parents. And uh, when my parents got that phone call, my father was so mad he couldn't even see straight. He didn't even want to talk to me. He might, he might have, I grew up with spare the rod, spoil the child. And it might have been a steel rod that, that day. But he got a phone call and said, we need to have a meeting with, uh, you know, either you or your wife or both of you. So my dad decided to send my mom up there. And my mom and I went to the high school. We go to the principal's office. And the principal's just laying it down how I did this and how I did that and didn't care about my grades. And I mean, just went on and on about how terrible I was. And my mom stood up and she stood up for me. And I, I did not deserve it at all. I was in the wrong completely and totally, and I was caught. And she still stood up for me. That's my son you're talking about. Don't talk to him like that. With, I mean, I'm listening right here. Don't you do that. I don't care what he did. He didn't this, that, whatever. Don't you do that. She stood up for me, and I did not deserve it. At all. Totally in the wrong. 
Sometime later, somebody was preaching a sermon about the love of Jesus. And I, 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 I had a quiet time, and there was a come to Jesus meeting, just me and the Holy Spirit. And he brought me back to that story. And the part that I didn't tell you is when we left the principal's office, I looked at my mom and I said, you know, I can't believe you stood up for me. And she said, you're my son. She said, and I don't care if you went to prison. I will always love you and I'll always be on your side. Always. During that quiet time, the Holy Spirit brought that up and said to me, you remember that conversation you had with your mom? I said, yeah. He said, she can't light a candle to the love I have for you. And I went, wow, I get it. I get it. I get it. Jesus loves us. He proved it. He laid his life down for us. And we're called to show that same love. And not be selfish. I've never forgot that love story. It stuck with me. I'm, I'll be 62 this year. I was 16 years old then. And I can remember, I can remember the walk down the sidewalk leaving the office still. I still remember what my mom was wearing, believe it or not. Because the words that she told me had such an impact on my life. And when the Holy Spirit told me that her love couldn't light a candle to the love he had for me. It, uh, it really gave me a, a, a come to Jesus wake up call. That come to Jesus wake up call has, you know, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's John 14, 15. Walking that out because of the love was one of the main reasons that I turned my life over. Turned from and, and, and went to serving Jesus. I had no clue in my, I had no clue. Not an inkling. I mean, if you'd have told me going to the mission field, 10, 15, 20 years ago was what I'd be doing now, that I'd be standing in front of you with a microphone preaching or teaching or whatever, I'd have called you a liar. I was the guy that took an F in high school before I'd do an oral book report because I would not stand in front of people. Wouldn't do it. But that love of Jesus that continues I don't know how to say it any other way than it seems like it gets str the more that I show him I love him by doing what he tells me to do it seems like the more it grows but there's another passage of scripture that really helped me as well and I think it's in Ephesians um, let me see if I look it up here real quick I believe it's in Ephesians 4 Come on here. Where's it at? Let's see. It's Ephesians 4, 30 to 32. Let's see if I can look that up and just read it. Ephesians. Oop. No, I want the ESV Bible. Not even. It was changing the version on me. I'm sorry. Okay, where are we at? Ephesians. That's in the New Testament, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians, and what did I say? 30 to 32, okay? This passage of Scripture stuck with me almost as long as the love Scripture. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away. Um, let me read that again. Let all bitterness and wrath, 
and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. What really, really rang true to me and still does to this day is grieving the Holy Spirit. Because when I get angry or you pick it, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. He, he, he suffered enough. Why do I want to do something that's going to, make, that, that's going to cause him f- feelings of pain? If you don't think that, Holy, that Jesus had emotions, what, what's the shortest scripture in the Bible? Jesus wept. He has feelings. He has emotions. And I don't want to grieve him. I just don't want to grieve him. You know, these, this, this is basic stuff that I'm talking about tonight. But it's stuff that I, personally I need. I think everybody needs it. Not because I'm the one standing up here saying it. But I think we all need that. We need the base. This is the thing. When, when you're in the military, they say the more you practice in peacetime, the less you bleed in wartime. And what do they practice in peacetime? It's nothing but the basics. It's the basics. Getting back to the basics is what we all need. We all walk in amazing gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have and have been witness to and watched God heal and do and provide. And it, 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 I, there's no way to even put a value on any of that. But grieving the Holy Spirit helps me, help me walk away from all kinds of sin. You know, one of the last things that I, that I gave up was uh, drinking alcohol. I mean, I, I used to smoke weed and do coke and meth, and I've done it all. And I don't say that with a proud spirit at all. I say that to say this. If God will use me, he will use anyone. Somebody that wouldn't stand up and give an oral book report and walk through what I've walked through. Okay? But, when I, you know, once I got the love thing, the grieving the Holy Spirit helped me lay it a bunch down. And the last thing that, that, that I basically gave up was drinking. I used to like to drink Crown and Coke. I did. I liked it. That's a whiskey if you don't know who, what that is. Mine was Coke. That being said, I was, uh, this was, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago. Uh, one day the, I was having to come to Jesus meeting. The Holy Spirit said, you know, Charlie, uh, and it wasn't that I got drunk. It wasn't that I wasn't drunk. It had nothing to do with any of that. It's just something I enjoyed to do. But the Holy Spirit asked me, he says, do you love me enough to quit? And my answer was, Lord, I, I quit everything else. He said, that's not what I asked you. Do you love me enough to quit? And I said, yeah. And, I, 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 it's, not, and it's not a problem, never has been a problem for any of it. So the question to each and every one of you here is do you love Jesus enough that if there's something going on in your life that may be grieving the Holy Spirit, do you love him enough to quit? Do you love him enough to get honest with it and lay it down? The Victory Begins with Surrender, Pastor Jackie's book. That's another great pass, a great saying. But laying it down. 
So is there anything you need to lay down? I don't know. But if you do, tonight would be a good night to do so. Those of you watching or anybody here. So I'm just going to have everybody stand to their feet. And I'm just going to lead everybody in a prayer. And if there's something you need to lay down, then confess it. And I'll, I'll, I'll lead the prayer. Father, we just come to you tonight. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you thanks, Lord, for what you've done in our lives, what you represent in our lives, and what you're going to continue to do. And, Father, for those things in my life that I am laying down or still need to lay down, whatever that is, and each and every one of you, whatever that may be, Father, I just ask that you forgive me, and I pray in Jesus' name that you give me the Oh, the insight, the thought process to remember how much you really love me and do I want to continue to grieve the Holy Spirit so I have to ask for forgiveness. We lay it down tonight, Father. We thank you for your redemptive grace and your, and your cleansing blood. And we thank you once again, for what you've done in the past and what you're going to continue to do in the future. It's in the mighty name of Jesus I pray tonight. Amen. 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 Anybody want to say anything, Vonna, Emily, uh, Damon? <laughs>